I, I do not. There is no vice chair of the subcommittee, so I will pass the gavel to the Uber chairman and present my own legislation. House Bill 246. Delegate Levine, I'd like you to be at the front. All right. <laughs> All right. Mr. Chairman, yes, I shall do that. I'm on a tight ship around here. Uh, I understand. Uh, uh, you should also stand up. No sitting. Uh, <laughs> you have 30 seconds to present your bill. I may reconsider the uh, delegate, delegate, delegate Levine. House Bill 246. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, House Bill 246 is a bill that requires, before a locality puts in police worn body cameras, that it establish a written plan based on the guidelines of the Department of Criminal Justice Services, which are quite extensive, and that prior to adopting its written policy, the agency shall make the policy available for public comment and review. I should be clear what this doesn't do, because uh, it, 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 it's not a big bill. Uh, it does not require fighting cameras. It does not require that every locality adopt the exact same policy. What it does do is make sure that the community knows the policy, knows what's going on, make sure that the uh, law enforcement out in the field uh, goes out and knows what the policy is so it's not ad hoc. And most importantly, it's after public comment and review. So it absolutely allows the public to have a, a comment period to talk about how these cameras should be used. There is wide disagreement about when you turn them on, when you turn them off, uh, what should be done with various witnesses, what should be done, confidentiality, and whatever policy a locality adopts, I think it's important to work this out ahead of time rather than in the middle. Uh, the um, body cameras are uh, very useful, I believe, for protecting the truth. If the truth is that the law enforcement officer is correct and the civilian is in the wrong, they protect that truth. If the truth is that the civilian is in the right and the law enforcement officer is in the wrong, they protect that truth. So I, I support body cameras. I simply am asking that localities set up a system ahead of time so that everyone knows what they're doing. It's a, you could argue it's a transparency bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any questions from the members of the subcommittee? Okay, thank you. All right, anyone here speak in favor of House Bill 246? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm John Jones of the Sheriff's Association. We are in favor of this bill. It's a very simple bill. Let me just say what it does, or what it doesn't do. It, it, you can't just have a body camera with no policy. That's what this bill prevents, and it has happened. If you have a law enforcement agency that's gonna put a body camera on, there needs to be a policy adopted by the agency, and that's all this bill says. And it, it goes a step further, which is fine with us, makes it public for public comment. You know, a few years ago, body cameras were hot items, hot topic, hot button items, and so this addresses it. And we have had experiences where you as an agent can put a body count on, no policy, no FOIA policy, no uh, anything. And the agents are next door, you know, we're looking at storage, we're looking at a lot. It's necessary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, whichever one. <laughs> uh, Dana Sharp, Police Chiefs. Um, so we have actually opposed this bill in the past, not because we don't believe that agencies should have policies, but um, be simply because of the construct of how those policies should be developed. And so my request would be that there is in paragraph B in the last paragraph of the bill, there is a sentence that says, such policies shall follow identified best practices and be consistent with Virginia law and regulations using as guidance the model policy established by Department of Criminal Justice Services. Now here's why I would like to see that sentence struck. First of all, agencies do follow best practices when they establish any policy. Um, most of our agencies that are either state or nationally accredited, if they have body cameras, then they must have a policy and they'll be um, a, reviewed for the quality of their policy based on whether it's compliant with law and regulations and best practices there. The concern I have here is the technology is constantly changing and the best practices are changing and court decisions are changing. If we are tied to um, model policy as developed by DCJS and they actually don't have a dedicated staff person 24 seven writing model policy, um, then we could be delayed in terms of our policy being reviewed as being inconsistent with something that is quote unquote guidance from DCJS 
when in fact new technology, new best practices, new court decisions may require a quicker change in the policy. I don't think it harms the bill. We're certainly in support of having um, uh, public comment and review on policies. We're certainly in support of, in fact, demanding of our agencies that they have policies when they have um, body cameras in place. We just think that it's burdensome and possibly could um, put our agencies in a difficult position if DCGS can't keep their model policy written up to current standards, regulations, and law. So I would, we would ask that sentence to be struck. Hopefully it will be viewed as a friendly amendment. So Mr. Chairman, I would say that the DCJS established a very detailed model policy a few years ago with very detailed guidance. And also that the bill requires the policy be used as guidance. It doesn't say they have to adopt the policy word for word. It used as guidance was language that was chosen very carefully to say, you should look at the model policy, IDCJS, whatever it is, use it as guidance uh, and uh, follow Virginia law and regulations and identify best practices. I don't see that as controversial. I also don't see that as a requirement that they adopt every single part of the policy, uh, but merely use it as guidance and as the policy changes in time and as best practices change over time, I would hope that localities policies change over time but the only thing that it requires is that the policy be made available prior to the operation of a body-worn camera system. Uh, and so, uh, while I would hope it would change over time, I don't think that's required by the legislation. Senator Levine, I, I guess I want to follow up on what, what she was saying. Um, if best practices, to your point, do change, who's, what's the onerous on, who's the onerous on to update to that best practice? Is it the is it DCJS or is it the agent, the department? Well, if you look at line 254, it says no law enforcement agency having jurisdiction shall purchase or deploy a body-worn camera system unless it has adopted and established a written policy. So I see this as uh, at the time you establish your policy, you have to follow the best practices and the guidance as they exist then. It does not actually require you to update your policy as time goes on. I would hope that based on sort of the intent and spirit of this amendment that they will be updated, but it doesn't require it to be updated. It simply says before you use it the first time, you have to follow the best practices. At least that's how I read uh, section three. Any questions for Delegate Corey, you recognize me. No, I'm speaking for my neighbor. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, speak, uh, Mr. Chair, speaking to, I'm sorry. Delegate Corey. Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Rod's uh, question, I'm just taking a look at um, uh, line 256, where it just says, such policy shall follow identified best practice. And I think that's consistent with uh, Delegate Levine's suggestion that there's no, it's not mandating, it's not making it mandatory. It's just a suggestion that they shall follow. Well, I think they, sh they shall follow identified best practices, but, but use as guidance the model policy. I would say the model policy is, is not what's required, um, but best practices, I, I think, is required. Now, what best practices are, people may disagree with, that's for sure, uh, but, uh, you know, so I don't think there's a straitjacket here. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah, you know, with all due respect, I mean, that's that's a huge area of, of I don't know, clarification here in the body. Shall and may, as you, you know, shall means you shall, you right. will, right. and will do this. I but, told you. Um, <laughs> but, but, but also, Mr. Chairman, you know, to kind of go along with your thoughts, I mean, that that's, well, one of the, I, I do have another area of concern, um, but and, and, and as, as the delegate said, as, as the chairman himself said, that um, you know that those policies aren't written, and so if we're tied in. I don't want to put words in Ms. Shrub's mouth, but kind of what I'm hearing from her, and, and I would kind of echo say, saying that can can actually hamstring if if those things aren't uh, in place, up to date, current, what have. You. Mr. Chairman, if I may, there, and as much as we love our Department of Criminal Justice Services, there are plenty of other uh, research forums, the Police Executive Research Forum, uh, IACB, who have developed 
model policies and have the staff to keep them updated regularly. So our agencies have a variety of places they can go to, to identify best practices and to get really good policy language. I don't wanna really see us hamstring them to this language because I am also concerned that this could be held against them in the event that a lawsuit's brought against the agency and then the defense attorney would possibly hold them to language. Granted, it's, you know, it, it, is, it is intended to be somewhat as guidance in the bill. I just don't think that our agencies necessarily need to have that. They know what best practices are. They know where to look for really good guidance on professional policies. And because there is review and comment written into the bill, the public will have the final you know, input into what their localities policy looks like. I just don't think the, the additional language is necessary. So if you really want to respond to that, I think mean, she does raise a good point. I know you're trying to set out DCJS because you think they have a really good model policy. I do. Yeah, but in five years from now and 10 years from now, are they going to have that? And do you want the sheriffs or the other agencies to continue to use the old policy when it's outdated? Well, I, I guess my answer is that uh, we ask them to look both at identified best practices uh, and use as guidance the model policy. So I actually think including identified best practices allows any deviation. I, I actually think that uh, if you take out that language, uh, we might have a little more problem with them being hamstrung by DCJS. But when we say they shall follow identified best practices, be consistent with Virginia law and regulations, and use as guidance the model policy, I actually think that gives them a decent amount of leeway in terms of what policy they choose. Uh, and so... Can I ask you a question? Though? Yeah. I mean, if, Mr. Chairman, I, I would, what if I offered the amendment if I were to, after the word Virginia law and regulations, just ended the sentence there and deleted, struck the rest? Taking out the guidance, uh, the model yeah. policy. Yeah. So you are getting your identifying best practices and being consistent with Virginia law and regulations, but you're not putting into the code a model policy that may become stale down the road. You might end up coming back here in five years, updating it to something else. I guess I could say that they probably would use it as guidance even if it weren't in the code. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I guess I'd be agnostic about that in a minute. Uh, I do think it's a good policy, and I think they had a really good stakeholder group, but I understand what you're saying, that uh, they may not update it as much as they should. Uh, so far, I think we're good, but... I'll, I'll ask again, John. Kevin, my thought on it is that, let's see, we're using it as a guideline. That's all it is, guidance. DCJS has a ton of model policies, and we use them all the time. And I, I don't find anything in here offensive to the sheriffs. We send it out to the our committee. It was overwhelming. The sheriff's looking at it, and they've done nothing before. They thought that was no sign of it. Okay. All right. I can make the motion, or I just have one. All right. Anyone have any other questions? Yes. Doug, Mr. Mr. Chairman, my, my other concern uh, with the with the language is the the last four words with the public comment and review. Um. My concern. What what does that what does that practically look like, Mr. Chairman? I, I would say that it looks like uh, that the law enforcement agency says, okay, this is going to be our policy. This is what we've developed, identifying best practices using this guidance from DCJS. Uh, listen up, folks in our locality. We're going to publish it. We'll put it on our website, and we're going to have at least one. I think only one's required. Public meeting on July twelfth uh, to let the public talk about what they think of this. And then if the public likes it, great. If people have uh, disagreements with it, they would be discussed in an open forum, a nice transparent forum, and perhaps the public view would allow them to change, modify something based on some great idea of the public. I don't think it requires them to change any of it, uh, but I do think that it's always good. Part of the reason for this, it's not only so the public can give suggestions, although that is part of the reason. It's also so the public is aware of the policy. One of the things I've always been concerned about with body cameras is people, and I mean people in the community, fear it's going to be ad hoc. Fear that the police officer will turn it on when the police officer wants to turn it on and turn it off when the police officer wants to turn it off. And by letting the public know and affect their legal rights, knowing what the policy is, then they know when dealing with law enforcement, uh, particularly if this information gets around, and I hope it would, 
what exactly is going on. Know that what they're saying is gonna be, they're drunk, right? What they're saying is gonna be filmed. Whatever the policy is, it's really a measure of transparency. So I want the public to know the policy. And if someone in the public makes a suggestion on how to make the policy better, let them comment. And if the law enforcement likes a suggestion, let them incorporate it. What I don't want is a policy developed in secret without the public knowing, because that sort of defeats the purpose uh, of the bill. Yeah, the chairman, I would, I would ask, um, like, it is there a concern, all right, my concern on that, but okay. is, is, you know, the, the public, I mean, there's going to be, you know, potentially, I mean, a hundred different views of, of, potentially. of, of what, what's actually, and, and, and some of those views are going to be from people that really don't have a, a, a legal understanding. I mean, this is, so, you know, that, that's my concern on that part that, uh, Folks, really, I get the, the, the overall public, you know, knowing what's going on, but to be, to, I, I know you're not saying that, that they have to, to you know, that's just. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I would answer the delegate that I've done many a town hall, and at most of my town halls, I get public that agrees with me, public that disagrees with me, public that makes really cogent, uh, intelligent comments, and public that says some things that really don't make a lot of sense to me. I think that's generally true of any public meeting. And I can tell you that I personally uh, take the wisdom from my constituents and others when they grant it and tend to uh, discount the comments that I find to be unproductive. And I think that that, that would be what would happen here. Delegate Call. Um, Mr. Chair, I would ask, uh, Mr. Chair, <laughs> are there any agencies currently that don't have um, a spelled out uh, procedure of how we have I believe uh, uh, Mr. Jones mentioned there was a problem. Yeah, one, exp one experience. One experience that we knew of, but we didn't survey. Okay. We do have a number of agencies that don't use body cameras at all. Okay. There's a lot that they do. And all the sheriffs I've talked to, they already have a policy. Okay. So what do you say? Um, I move to report this bill. Second. All right. Motion is made to report. Recommend reporting. Properly seconded. All in favor, please vote on the electronic voting board. the roll. Bill reports five to two. Thank you, Delia Molina. Thank you. I get the gavel back now. Is either Delia Turian or Delia Adams in the room?